You're live with Lucy Hawkins. Now, there's been plenty of commentary over the years about how playing video games is bad for your health, but a new study of close to 40,000 gamers has found there's little to no evidence that time spent playing affects their well-being. The research was done by the Oxford Internet Institute, which measured well-being by asking about life satisfaction and levels of emotions such as happiness, sadness, anger and frustration. Let's go live to Oxford now and talk to Professor Andrew Shabilsky, who is from the Institute and worked on the study. Very good to see you. This is going to come as a surprise to so many people because it goes against the narrative that we've heard for so long. Can I first ask you, though, how you actually conducted the study? Uh, well, I mean, that, that's the really exciting thing as a scientist. Uh, we've been worried about games for about 40 years. Um, but most of the time that people like me study games, we ask people, uh, how much do you think you played? And then we ask them questions about their well-being or their mental health. Uh, in this study, what we did is we, we had people donate their data, uh, the data that's stored by Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo and others. Uh, we actually used objective player logs uh, because many of these games are online games now. And then we were able to investigate how kind of variations in well-being uh, either coincided or, or failed to coincide uh, with, with, with uh, patterns of video game play. But Andrew, how old were the gamers that you talked to? Because I think there's a particular concern about children and teenagers and the amount that they're playing. Yeah, absolutely. So this was a study of adults. Uh, the industry is very sensitive uh, uh, about the optics of something like research on children. Uh, and uh, we're really looking forward to expanding the research to include not only kids uh, or adolescents, um, but, but also looking at a much wider range of games uh, across a much longer period of time. And the games that you were looking at, I think we're watching someone play Fortnite right now, and I'm not sure. See, I'm familiar with all of these games, you can tell. I've got kids who play them. But were the games that you use collaborative? Because I've often seen just such fun and joy from children or teenagers playing games because they're doing it together as a team. Yeah, so we had a pretty uh, we had a pretty even spread of games. Some of them were these online worlds, collaborative online worlds. Some of them were combat games, uh, you know, games like Fortnite or Apex Legends, uh, and and others were very creative games or relaxing games like Animal Crossing. So we we, we tried to get a good cross section of, of video game play, um, but but yeah, there, there were many genres that that were unfortunately left out. Your institute has done studies on this before that came up with different results, though, that, that were more worrying. Why do you think your results this time were different, Andrew? Well, I mean, it, it, they're pretty consistent, actually. So if, it, it is the case that if you have more time to play video games, uh, you are a happier person. But I think that anyone who has more free time is probably a bit happier on average. Uh, in this study, we looked at something a bit different, which was if you increase or decrease your video game play, and again, these are adults, uh, across a six-week period, does that meaningfully bear on, on variation in your well-being? And we just found pretty strong evidence that, you know, while people who have more free time might be happier, uh, are kind of allocating or, or, or cutting back on video game play itself, uh, that quantity of play uh, may not be so important. But the thing that was very important is why people are playing. So if you're playing a game out of a sense of compulsion or, you know, uh, feeling, feeling uh, a sense of pressure to play games, feeling like you have to play games, uh, that was negatively related to well-being over time. And if games are kind of a fun part of your life that you can slot into other activities, pick them up when you want to put, play them, put them down when you don't, uh, uh, that led to pretty rewarding experiences with respect to well-being. Yeah, that seems to make sense, actually, Andrew. But can I ask you, outside of the study, it's summer holidays yeah. for many of our viewers in the Northern Hemisphere who might be worried about their teenagers or kids playing. When people ask you about mm -hmm. that, what advice do you give? Um, it, it's easy. I mean, we have a five-year-old and, and an eight-year-old in our house, and it is in summer holidays here in the UK. Um, it, it, it's, it's very important to check in with young people about why they're playing video games. Is it something that's just fun? Is it something that they know how to pick up and put down, and they kind of build the same self-regulatory skills that you have for anything else in your life, like food or, or exercise? Or is it something that they're doing because they feel pressured to do it? And being able to check in and keep those lines of communication open are really the really key the really key insights from the study and about 50 years of human motivation research in general that's great advice i'm taking notes andrew thank you very much for joining right. us good to talk to you from uh,